of the best ways to start earning money as a magician is to perform at restaurants. But you might be wondering, how on earth do I start and what should I perform? And so today I want to show you my professional repertoire as a performing restaurant magician, but I also want to give you some tips and advice on how to be the best restaurant magician you can be. So let's get straight into it. Now I thought I'd start by showing you my repertoire since that's probably one of the more interesting parts, but make sure you stick around if you're actually serious about getting into restaurant magic or you're already in it, and I'll give you some really valuable advice and tips that I wish I'd had when I was starting. So first things first, I'm a card magician, and so obviously the first thing I carry in my pockets is a deck of cards. I just use a generic deck of bicycle standards um, with all 52 cards, or at least at the start of the night there's all 52 cards, usually by the end of it I'm missing quite a few. Um, but this is really great because it offers a lot of versatility in terms of card tricks. There are so many card tricks that I could bust out whenever I want, um, but I'll give you some suggestions. The first one is pretty obvious, it's the ambitious card. It's the one that probably most magicians will learn as one of their first tricks. Um, and it's true, it's a really great crowd pleaser. When I started out, I didn't really like it, but now that I've performed it a lot um, and I've seen the reactions, people really love it. However, make sure that if you are doing one, have the card signed. Um, you can afford it if you're performing at a restaurant, um, but it makes the trick so much stronger. The next effect I recommend with a deck of cards is the card to pocket. I have my own original routine which I love to perform and it's probably the trick that I've performed the most for lay people. And it's just one of those card tricks that doesn't seem like a card trick, it's not an ordinary pick a card kind of thing. So definitely go for a card to pocket. A couple of other ones that I love to perform is a triumph. I use Kostya Kimlat's Caligula Triumph which is probably one of the harder triumphs out there but I really love it. And as a restaurant performer you want a really fast snappy 20 to 30 second trick to perform for people who really don't want to see anything. So I love to perform a sandwich trick and last but not least I also like to perform oil and water. So those are some recommendations for effects that you might want to look into and there are some other great little packet tricks that work really well for restaurants. So that's the first thing, that's my deck of cards. I like to use red writer backs um, just because if it's red the Sharpie marker shows up better on the back. But other than that, use whatever deck of cards you like. Make sure it looks ordinary, doesn't look gimmicked or anything like that. In my left pocket is another card related item. This is the Phantom Deck by Joshua Dre. Uh, this is a really good effect for if you love doing close-up magic um, or strolling magic at a restaurant, it works super well. It's a great closer to almost any effect that you currently perform, as well as being a really great trick in itself. So I'll leave a link down below where you can pick one of these up, uh, it's really worth it. That is a Phantom Deck by Joshua J. The next thing I'm going to show you is probably the second most important thing that I take with me at a restaurant, and that is a Sharpie marker. You never want to rely on someone else to have a pen to sign a card, and Sharpies work really well. Obviously you can use any kind of permanent marker you like. You can also, you know, do the old disappearing pen kind of thing, uh, if you're into that. But that is probably the most important thing, I almost use that in every trick. There's a Sharpie. Up next is another one of my favourite things to carry with me, um, it is my wallet. And obviously when I go out, I always take a wallet regardless. Um, but this is the FPS wallet by Brent Braun, if you're interested. Uh, it has a card to wallet function, which is super nice. A card, uh, you can make a card appear in the inside pocket. Um, and so I used it as a closer for my ambitious card. But it's also just a great thing to carry around, collect all those juicy tips you keep on getting. That is my wallet. It works really well, and I highly recommend this one. I'll leave a link down below. Up next is something I don't really carry that often, um, but it is a little kind of business card wallet which you can put business cards in but I also have my three card Monty uh, cards in here. These are just normal cards uh, that I use for a generic three card Monty routine. Um, I don't tend to perform this that much so I, but I thought I'd include it anyway. Three card Monty is one of those great effects that everyone loves. It's almost like a game um, so it's really easy to get people involved in that. That's my three card Monty routine. Now so far all of the items have been card related and it's really important to have variety with you when you're performing at a restaurant. And another thing that's really important is to be able to perform for kids. So I hit the double whammy and I take sponge balls. Um, to be honest, sponge balls are not my favourite things to perform, but it works really well for uh, a kid's audience or if you've got family. Um, but don't underestimate these for adults as well. They actually are quite powerful if you can do the, the routine as well. I just do a kind of basic um, sponge balls routine. Nothing too fancy, but yeah, these are sponge balls. Don't ask me which ones these are. I just got given these by a friend. Um, those are sponge balls. Up next is this. This is a thumb tip. And if you're not a magician, you're probably wondering, what the heck is this? Does he use it for disappearing thumb tricks? No, I don't. I don't want to tip too much of this because I think it's a really powerful secret weapon uh, as a magician. All I'm going to say is that restaurant tables have salt, and so it's perfect. Next up, I have a coin. Yep, a single coin. <laughs> that tends to be all I take. I'm not really too much of a coin magician, though I'm learning some new things at the moment, and it's pretty cool. Um, the great thing about having one coin is that uh, it doesn't clink when you're carrying it around. I sometimes like to carry four coins so that I can do uh, a three fly. And these coins, by the way, are just some of my 
kind of local currency, they're nothing too special, they're not American or anything like that. But I also have a, a nice one coin opening routine. Um, I don't know what it's called, I kind of came up with it a little bit myself. Um, but it's really important to have some kind of visual magic, especially at the start, just to get the interest peaked. So coin magic is great for that, making things appear, disappear, and fly through the air without them being able to see. So single coin, there you go. Last but not least, uh, my keys. These are just normal keys, obviously I take them out with me when I'm going out, um, but they also have magic applications. I don't want to tip too much. All I'm going to say is that if you want to do magic with rings, this is perfect. Great for weddings, great for parties, and also great for restaurants. So yeah, this is my keys. Um, there you go. So that is my professional repertoire. You'll notice that it's not that big, and that's on purpose. When I started out performing at a restaurant, I had so many things in my pocket, I could barely remember what I was carrying. And I soon discovered, after one night of performing, that it was just too much. Firstly, I only was ever performing one or two tricks per table. And secondly, I had to struggle to remember what I could perform and you know, my pockets were bulging with things, it was just not that practical. And so I decided to slim down my repertoire and ever since then I've been trying to take things out, put things in, um, just to make it as sleek and minimalistic as possible. But I also did want to give you some tips. These are some things that I really wish I'd known when I was starting out doing restaurant magic. One of the biggest reasons why people don't like doing restaurant magic is because of the fear of approaching people. And in fact, when I started out, I was terrible at it. That's the reason I got rejected so much, is because I didn't know how to approach people and I didn't know how to make them say yes. So now I want to give you two strategies, they're really simple, um, to help you approach people and make sure that they really want to see that magic. The first strategy is called the Mickey Mouse strategy. If you're ever at Disneyland and you see Mickey Mouse, you're going to want him to come up to you and take a picture with you. I don't know what Mickey Mouse does, I haven't been to Disneyland. But it's the same for restaurant magic. If you're there, people are probably going to want some kind of entertainment. So go up to them confidently and say, welcome to the magic restaurant. Would you like to see a minute of magic? It's really hard for them to say no. Firstly, because you're confident and they kind of mirror that. But secondly, because they want to be entertained, they're waiting for their food. And thirdly, because you only said one minute. It's not a big time commitment. If they don't like it, they only have to put up with it for a minute. So the Mickey Mouse strategy is all about confidence, approaching them and giving them what they already want. However, that doesn't always work, especially for a restaurant slash bar setting where you've got a lot more seated people um, drinking or things like that. You're going to want to use the cheers strategy. <laughs> I don't know, I just made up that name like 10 seconds ago. All you're going to need for this is a drink and some confidence. All you're going to do is grab a drink and just walk up to them and ask them how their day's been. Get to know them a little bit, build a bit of a relationship or a bit of rapport with the spectator. And don't even mention the fact that you're a magician. In fact, I've done this before and just had a yarn to someone, not worrying about doing a magic trick for them. In fact, I don't even think I showed them anything. This is a great way to build a relationship or a rapport with the people that you're performing for. This actually really increases the impact your magic will have if you perform for them. So those are my two top strategies for approaching people. Um, sorry this, this video is going on, but I just want to give you a few last general tips before you leave. So stick around. <laughs> The first piece of general advice is get to know the staff. This is actually really important because you start to build a rapport with the staff, they're more likely to recommend you or be friendly around you and also it's just nice to have friends in the place that you're working. The second tip is pretty obvious, dress appropriately. Don't walk into a nice upper class restaurant looking like Chris Angel and your leather and your spiked hair. Make sure that you're wearing a suit if you're in a formal occasion or some really nice informal clothes. Thirdly, and this is super important, don't be afraid to screw up. Learning to recover from a screwed up magic trick is probably one of the most important skills you can learn as a magician. In fact, I remember I was performing at a restaurant once and I screwed up every single table I went to. Every single time I went to someone, I screwed up the trick I was trying to perform, but I always managed to save it in some way. And that was like a really big learning experience for me because I was like, man, it actually doesn't matter how the trick goes because whatever happens, I can recover from it. And there's a side note on this tip, make sure you have a couple of outs. Some really great ones are a visible deck, this is just a great way to always get out of a trick. But also the ability to palm a card off the deck um, and go into your pocket and act as if it's been in your pocket the whole time. Both of those are some really great outs that I often use um, and kind of save a lot of tricks that would otherwise screw up. Now, last tip of the video, and this one's going to sound super cliche, but it's really important, have fun. And I don't just mean that in the like, yay, have fun, it's your job, enjoy it. I mean, if you have fun, the people you're performing for will also have fun. It's way more fun to watch a performer who's obviously enjoying himself and obviously loving what he's doing than someone who's like, I'm just paid to be here. So that's the last tip. I don't want to ramble too much longer. Have fun. But that is just some advice I've got for anyone out there wanting to do restaurant magic. 
I realize this won't be for most people out there, but I thought I'd uh, put together this video because this is some advice that I really wish I'd had when I was starting out. But that's the video. It's been a bit longer, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. If you did and you're a restaurant magician, leave a comment down below and feel free to leave any other questions you might have. I'll answer them all. Other than that, that's been me. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you didn't, that's okay. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.